every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance. I believe that you are my fortress, you are my portion, you are my hiding place. I Hi there, Trinity Church. Ryan Schmitz here, lead pastor. Happy Easter. Good to spend some time with you. Listen, we have a saying that we say every Easter, He is risen, and the response is, He is risen indeed. I hope that you'll say that in your respectable homes today. But listen, this statement, He is risen, has been declared for over 2,000 years. It's not just a catchphrase for the church. It is a fact that is worth repeating. Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world. He was buried, and then three days later, he rose from the dead victorious. He is risen. He is risen indeed. We have a witness, a witness of amazing miracle at Easter time. And one of the star witnesses of Easter is the empty tomb. 
The tomb is empty, folks. Mary and the disciples ran to the tomb and couldn't find him there. Angels met them there and said, you better turn around. The centurions, these battle-hardened guards who were guarding the grave, ran in fright when the tomb shook and opened. They told the Pharisees, and they knew what happened. They went to great lengths to cover it up. They used bribery to keep people quiet. They spread propaganda and lies about the disciples to try and shudder the truth, but it was no use. The doors of heaven had flung open and grace flooded the earth. People saw him. 500 people at one time witnessed him. The disciples witnessed him. They spoke with him. They ate with him. They touched him. They saw him as he ascended into heaven. These disciples, once cowering at the cross, now storming the gates of hell at the resurrection. And do you know why? It's because he is risen. Death has lost their, this, its sting. God is victorious. This is amazing. What is the message of Easter for 2020? You know, I believe that God is speaking to the world louder than ever. And now more than ever, we need to stop and we need to listen for the voice of God. Folks, we have got to stop listening to ourselves for just a moment. We need to mute the news feed for a minute. We need to stop streaming the myriads of opinions and pause the professionals giving their advice for just a second and listen to the calm, still voice of God. There is so much going on in our world today. What does the world need to hear from God this Easter? The message is, there is hope. There is hope. There is assurance for the broken world. Jesus Christ is the hope of mankind. Amen? Right before Jesus went to the cross, Jesus made this bold statement. John 14, 6 records this. And this statement, it reminds me of when Babe Ruth got up to the plate and he took his two fingers and he pointed out in the center field as if to call his home run. Before he went to the cross, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one may come to the Father except through me. Now listen, all of history points to this moment. All of it. The covenants of God point to this. The laws of God point to this moment. The Jewish festivals, the altar, and the sacrifice, they point to Jesus on the cross. The prophecies and the word itself all point to this moment where the way, the truth, and the life would lead the lost to the hope of eternity. That's Easter, folks. And listen, the world is dying. The world is hurting. It needs hope now more than ever. This is the Easter message. Jesus said, there is a way to hope through me. It's one thing to say something, and it's another thing to prove it. And that's what Jesus did. He made a way for hope by dying on a cross to pay the colossal price for sin. He sacrificed, and this sacrifice appeased God's wrath for the sin of man. Jesus said, I am the truth. Now listen, it's one thing to say I am the truth. It's another thing to prove it. And that's what Jesus did. When Jesus came, he spoke with authority like none other. He brought wisdom from heaven, and he taught with authority. He was full of grace and truth, John tells us. He fulfilled prophecy, and then he backed up every message with amazing power and even supernatural miracles. His enemies, though clever, could not compete. They thought they'd have him at several accounts. They were thinking, surely we can outsmart this man. But every time, Jesus would shut them down with a simple statement leaving them to run with their tail between their legs. They thought maybe they had won when they were watching him hang on the Roman's cross. 
Surely they thought this troublemaker will be no more. But don't forget, Jesus also said, I am the life. I am the life. Jesus never said, I am the death. Jesus said, I am the life. And it's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to prove it. And the creator, the supplier, and sustainer of life gave up his life for you. And when he did this, three days later, after being wrapped, buried, and sealed in a tomb, he rose from the dead to conquer it forever. Folks, the tomb is empty. Jesus is alive, and we are alive in him because we share in that resurrection today because we trust Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We've confessed our sins to him, and we've declared him as Lord. It says in the Bible that through grace, you are saved by faith in Christ alone. I, too, have eternal life because I, too, am in Jesus. Isn't that amazing? That is the message of Easter. And I would like to say a prayer for you this Easter. Listen, I believe in the power of prayer. I believe prayer unlocks greatness. I hope that you pray. The Bible says the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Do you know that prayer can heal the sick? I believe prayer can save lives. I believe prayer can heal our land. That's what the Bible tells us. It's the way that you communicate to God. You know, you are never more closer to God than when you pray. It's also the way that God communicates to you. And I want to echo a prayer that Paul prayed over the church 2,000 years ago. This was a prayer for you. He prayed that God would reveal the vast truths to the believers of the amazing magnitude of the resurrection. It is incredible. And so I want to pray this prayer over you and your family today. This prayer is found in the first chapter of Ephesians, and I would like to review it with you before we pray. Would you please read Ephesians chapter 1, 15 through 23 with me? I'll start at verse 15. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. And here's the prayer. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know. I want to stop there for just a moment and let's review this. This prayer is for who? It's for the saints. It's for those who love the Lord and those who have faith in Jesus. He wants you to know the fullness of the resurrection. You know, some believers know enough about the resurrection to get by. The example that I can think of is that recently I purchased a iPhone 11 Pro Max, one of the top phones out there. And I know enough about this phone to get by, but I know that there is so much more than I can do with this beside play Angry Birds and make phone calls. There is so much more to the resurrection that Paul wants us to know as well. Paul wants you to know how vast this really is. He begins by invoking God to give the church spiritual perception. This is with the inner man, that the Holy Spirit would guide the church in truth. Now, I want you to notice here that Paul is not asking God to give believers something that they don't have, but rather he's praying that God would reveal to the church what they already have access to. Okay, do you get that? You already have access to all of this stuff, like in this phone. We just have to figure out how it works, what it's all about. And he prays that the believers would tap into wisdom and revelation and knowledge so that our hearts may have enlightenment, so that we would know. And this happens by the Spirit of God living in you. So here's a spiritual exercise. Before we even begin to pray, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to open the eyes of our heart 
to the mind of God so that we can understand these supreme facets of the resurrection. And then Paul's going to go on and he's going to speak on three of these amazing truths of the resurrection. Let's read verse 18 together. Having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know, and you can mark these in your Bible if you want to, that number one, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. Number two, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And number three, what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when what? He raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. Now I want you to pause for a moment and think about these things. These are big Do you know the hope to which you were called? This is big. Do you know that the word church is brought together by two different Greek words that just mean to be called out? The church is one who are called out. What are we called out from? Now, this isn't something like a slang where we say, I'm calling you out and you're going to We're daring you to do something. This means you are physically being taken out of something for something else. We as the church have been called out of the sin of this world, of even citizenship of this world, and into the citizenship of heaven. We have been called out of darkness and into light. The Bible tells us that we are called into grace. tells us that we are called into a life of holiness. The Bible tells us that we are called out of darkness and into marvelous light. This hope is yours. Do you know it? Now, the word hope and the way that is used in the Bible is not the same way that the world uses it. This hope is not, I hope that this love of God is true. Instead, it's this assurance that this love is true gives me hope. Do you see that? It's not, I hope I can get through this hard time. It's, I can get through this hard time because I have hope. It's not, I hope I can go to heaven. It's, I am heaven bound, so I have hope. That is Easter. We were once lost in our sin, and the Bible tells us that we were hopeless in that sin, separated from God. But blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again and to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen? That hope belongs to you. And that hope should be the driving force of your life. I'm going to pray that over you today. How about the second truth Paul prays for? That you would know the riches of his glorious inheritance. Do you know the riches of his glorious inheritance? I hope you do. You may be stunned by what Paul is speaking about here. Paul is not talking about what we get from Christ when we become a Christian. You know, there are many other places in the Bible that speak of our inheritance in Christ. The resurrection has unlocked heaven for you. There is an inheritance The Bible says it's imperishable, it's undefiled, it's unfading, and it's kept in heaven for you. You are co-heirs with Christ. Jesus went to prepare a place for you, and he'll come back to take you there one day. And we cannot comprehend the beauty and the majesty of this inheritance in heaven waiting us. But Paul is not talking about our inheritance in Christ. Did you read that? Listen to what it says. It says that we might know the glorious riches of whose inheritance? Of his inheritance in the saints. Paul is talking about the inheritance that Christ has in us. Think about that. It's amazing to know that Jesus sees his church as his glorious riches. You are God's treasure. Paul is praying that the church would know how much Jesus values you. You are his inheritance. Think about that for a moment. 
Maybe you think, why would he want me? You know, he's got everything. He's got heaven and earth. He's got celestial beings flying around him, singing and declaring his holiness. Why would he want to screw up like me? He's the king of creation. Well, maybe, just maybe you don't know how much you're worth. And that's why Paul's praying. Maybe you don't know how much God values you. Maybe you don't know how he felt when sin separated you from him. Maybe you don't understand how God changed and moved heaven and earth to have you back. Maybe you don't quite realize that when he went to the cross, he was saying, I would rather die than live without you. This part of the prayer is asking God to show me who I am to God. The world has many labels for people. They don't have very many good ones for churches, do they? But God has one. You are his glorious inheritance, his riches. That's amazing. And that's all that matters. That's what we're going to pray. The third element of the resurrection Paul prays for is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us according to his great might. Do you know the greatness of his power? So tremendous is this truth that Paul has to uh, enlist several Greek superlatives to get his point across. You see all these words just to try to tell us how big this power is. We see the word megas, which is just mega, uh, which is Im immeasurable, greatness. Dunamis in the Greek, which is um, the Greek word or the root word for dynamite power and force, energia, which is work as in energy, and then kratos for might. He is talking about this divine, dynamic, eternal energy that we need to tap into so that we can utilize all that Christ has to offer. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives in us. Do you know that? Paul is asking and praying that we would know this. So this is the prayer that I have for you this Easter. Let's read it again. Having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which you, he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe. According to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Amen and amen. That's an incredible prayer. What is the message for Easter 2020? Hope. There is hope. There is a Savior. There is a King who rules with all authority and has all power and dominion. And we share in the fullness of him as his church. Are you ready to live that out? I love what uh, N.T. Wright quote, it wrote, once people grasp the events of the Messiah's death and resurrection and how, they've tra and how it's transformed everything they are now, everything in them will change. Belief, behavior, attitudes, expectation, and not least, a new love and sense of real belonging. Get the gospel right and everything else will be right. Brothers and sisters, the tomb is still empty. Death has lost its sting. Are you glad for the message of Easter? Do you believe that God loves you so much? Do you want heaven over hell? Well, you know, it's one thing to say it. It's another thing to prove it. Believers, we must prove these by living out our life for Jesus Christ. 
We need to access the Holy Spirit and ask him to open the eyes of our heart to more and more of who God is and who you are as his child. We must tap in to the amazing power that God has given us access to. Also, if you're listening to this today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there is hope. Today is the day of salvation. And we would invite you to ask Jesus to be your Lord. I'm going to end with two prayers today. One for those who don't know the Savior. May I be the first to introduce you to this incredible hope. If you are listening today and you have never declared Jesus as Lord, I would like to lead you in this prayer. And you could just, with your heart, pray to this beautiful God. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's one thing that you've got to come to grips with, that we are separated from God and there's nothing that we can do, no merit, no efforts, no good deeds that would ever be worthy enough to reconnect us to God. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus was worthy. Jesus was sinless. And he died for your sin and mine. The Bible says that the wages of the sin is death. And that's our reality. We are lost in our hopelessness and sin, bound for hell for eternity. But it goes on to say that the gift of God is through Jesus Christ, eternal life. And so when you accept Jesus Christ and the gift that he made for you, and that's just asking God to be the Lord of your life, you too will enter into this hope. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one may come to the Father except through him. The other prayer that I'm going to pray is the one that we studied today. I am going to pray that the church will have eyes to see and ears to hear, that the eyes of their heart will be open to know the hope, the richness, and the power of the resurrection so that you too can begin to tap into the treasure that you have. So would you pray with me together? Let's pray. Dear God, this pandemic has awakened our world to the real need of life. It has brought to the surface this fear of unknown, the fear of death. We are afraid of death. And that's just because all of us one day will have to face it. And we are gripped by its darkness. It's amazing how in a month our booming culture just shuts down because of death. All of a sudden, the only thing that matters is life and death. In this pandemic of death, all are equal. The unseen virus comes for all people, great and small. Much like this pandemic of sin, we all have fallen short of God's glory. In this pandemic, we adapt our lives. We reach out for help. We stop everything to try to fix the problem. All of us try to come to one place. We search how to be saved. How much more should we with our soul? How much more with this pandemic of sin should we stop our world from turning until we get this fixed, until we figure out how we too can be saved? I pray for those people today that need the hope that only you provide. I pray that they would receive you as the Lord of their life. And if they are here listening, I would ask them to pray. Dear God in heaven, I know that I am a sinner. I know that I am separated from you. I need your hope this Easter. And I understand that years ago you died on the cross to pay for the penalty that was rightly mine. And you appeased the, God, the wrath of God when you did this. And then you rose from the dead, and now all that declare you in your resurrection will too share in that resurrection and too be a part of this hope. God, people have witnessed this throughout the ages. I want to be a part of this. This story is true. This life is true. You are the only way. If you are real, be real to me. Come into my heart. 
and be the Lord of my life. I also want to pray over those who are called out, those church members. We know our great hope is the resurrection. Without the resurrection, we are nothing. Allow us to have revelation and wisdom through the Holy Spirit living in us. Open the eyes of our heart so that we may know what is the hope to which he has called us, so that we may know what the riches of his glorious inheritance is in us, that we may know what the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the work of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of his heavenly places. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Jesus, show us these things. Thank you, God, for what you've done. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you this Easter. If you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we want to welcome you to the family. And would you reach out to us? Would you email us or uh, comment somewhere on the website and let us know who you are? We would love to know your story. We would love to connect with you and, and, and uh, invite you to be a part of our church. May God bless you this Easter. is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my to wear my
to you.